welcome to my sewing room. I have a really beautiful technique for you today with a kind of a funny name. It's called Ribbon and Organdy Sandwiches, but you know what? It is just beautiful. Let me just show you what I mean by ribbon and organdy sandwiches. This lovely little pinafore bib has ribbon and organdy sandwiches. The ribbon is flip-flopped underneath the organdy top, over here and once again on the other side. This particular little bib has absolutely exquisite silk ribbon embroidery running down the front also. Another ribbon and organdy sandwich right here is beautiful wide round thread ecru lace flip-flopped in between two layers of organdy. That's where I got the name ribbons and organdy sandwiches. The last dress, which I'm going to use a couple of times on the show, has ribbon and organdy sandwiches up in the neckline. You see the bow that's shaped underneath the organdy? And as I move down this gorgeous little creation, you'll see more ribbon is flip-flopped underneath Moving on down the bottom with the English netting, let me hold this up so you can see the ribbon that's flip-flopped on the petticoat underneath. And then when I put the organdy down over it, therefore it makes the ribbon and organdy sandwiches. Come with me over to the technique boards and I'll show you how easy it is to make your ribbon and organdy sandwich. Here is the beginning of the technique for this beautiful little dress. Now the ribbon and organdy sandwich technique I'm going to show you in just a second. Do you see how that ribbon is underneath the piece of organdy? The one I have on the board for you, I don't know how easily you can see that there, but the ribbon is shaped underneath the organdy on this perfectly elegant little sleeve. Here is exactly how that sleeve happened if I can get it unpinned from the board here. First of all, here is the sleeve traced off on a big piece of batiste. Then the basic design is drawn on the sleeve. Next, I have taken just plain polyester ribbon, flip-flop the different pieces, and I'll show you in just a moment how to flip-flop. So the pieces are flip-flop, they are pinned flat, and then right here shows you simply zigzag. Now, needless to say, I will not use the black thread when I'm working on this beautiful little pink and white dress for one of my granddaughters, but you get the idea. Then go over here and zigzag all of this. Now, the sandwich part comes in when I take a piece of organdy, put it right on top of the sleeve I have drawn. Remember, I've stitched down the whole bow. Then I zig, excuse me, I straight stitch all the way around, attaching the sleeve and the organdy. After straight stitching it, I come in and trim away all of the excess, and then I treat this sleeve exactly as if it were just a sleeve with one piece. People, that's all there is to making ribbon and organdy sandwiches. Now, I'll show you how to do that flip-flopping on today's very elegant Silk Dupioni Quilt Square. This ribbon, in, ribbon and organdy sandwich quilt square is really one of my favorites. Here we have the quilt square. It ha it's a pink, pink silk dupioni with a dusty pink ribbon uh, flip-flopped underneath it and your organdy on top. Before we leave this quilt square, I wanted to show you this glove, which I think is a really nice addition to the quilt. It's a crocheted purchase glove, which has been straight stitched all the way around. And these little silk roses are beautiful. Actually, you purchase them in a little package already made like that, and then stitch them on with monofilament thread. Each one of those teensy, teensy little roses is stitched on by hand, and then the little streamers are silk ribbon. Now let's go to the organdy and ribbon sandwiches. Flip-flopping lace or flip-flopping silk ribbon in this case is really easy to do. I trace off my design. Here will be a flip-flop, and here will be a flip-flop. I'll pull my arm around here where you can see. I come to the top of the design, put a pin on the outside, simply hold my finger and flip-flop it down. Now you might say, Martha, where in the world did you come up with a name like flip-flopping? Well, I'll tell you what, doesn't this look like a flip-flop to you? I, I began to play with this technique and, and shaping lace bows and, and I turned the lace over. And by the way, this is not a new tech with, technique with me. This was done around the turn of the century. And as I turned the bows like that, it seemed to me like I just flip-flopped it. So I named it flip-flopping and I think the name has, has stuck. 
Okay, when I come into the middle of the bow, and by the way, this is the gorgeous silk ribbon I'm using. When I come into the middle of the bow, I will simply pick up the pins, stick them in there like so. Now I have one more uh, uh, streamer of this ribbon to do, so I will bring it down here. It does not matter how these things overlap. They will be perfectly beautiful. As a matter of fact, the center part is going to be covered up anyway. So I come on down, sticking the pins into the pinning board. I come on down to the bottom. I need to do one more flip-flop, and it will be right there on the bottom. And then, of course, in just a few minutes, I will chop off this tail of the, of the silk ribbon. Now, what do I do right here in the middle? Because all bows need a bow tie, so I'm going to have to make a silk ribbon bow tie to go on my flip-flop bow. Okay, I already have my bow tie folded. I just took a little piece of silk ribbon, so I'm going to hang on to this middle section, put my bow tie right in place, stick a pin right here, stick a pin right here, stick a pin right here, and remove this pin and stick it right here. Now, good people, I do have to remove this from the board before I do the sewing. I cannot sew through the board at all. So I will spray starch it and press it, and after I've pressed it, and cut off these tails over here, then I will remove the pins, let me show you how to do that, and pin it flat to go to the uh, sewing machine for sewing. Now, speaking of the sewing machine and sewing, I'm ready to start sewing. This is the Pink Silk Dupioni and the wonderful Dusty Rose uh, Silk Ribbon, and it's such a complicated stitch to attach it. All in the world I do is zigzag. Go all the way down the side, zigzag all the way down the side, and of course I use my needle down position so when I come to the point I'll simply veer it around and zigzag. Now I'm not going to zigzag the whole thing because I'm going to show you how I make this a silk uh, rib a ribbon and organdy sandwich. After I zigzag the whole thing down, let me turn it this way, after I zigzag the whole thing down then I will put a piece of organdy on the top. Can you see how pretty that is? with the ribbon showing through, and then I will simply straight stitch all the way around the edge, put these two together to make a ribbon and organdy sandwich. Now flip flop your lace or flip flop your silk ribbon. Do you remember at the beginning of the show I had one ribbon and organdy sandwich with a beautiful lace sandwiched in two pieces of organdy? In this case, I've used silk dupioni, or you can use any fabric, it really doesn't matter. And then I once again flip flopped the silk ribbon, simply zigzagged it down, zigzag around your bow tie, zigzag around the corners. That's all there is to making a ribbon and organdy sandwich. One of the prettiest techniques. Actually, I have a ribbon and organdy sandwich on my blouse too. It's a little bit different look. And what I have done, I have used the silk ribbon uh, underneath the front of the blouse as well as I have used it on the cuff of the blouse. Here's what I would like to show you. This particular blouse has been made, and do you see the big silk ribbon that I have flip-flopped underneath? If you will look carefully with me right here. I also flip-flopped as I came down the streamers. I came here and I did a flip-flop on the streamer, 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 and then covered my end, you know, just zigzagged it down there to make it really pretty. As you can see, the finish of the blouse is simply zigzag lace edging on the side. That also has some entredeau. Okay. Oh, one more thing I forgot to show you. I've used the ribbon and organdy sandwich technique on the cuff also. Simply putting the beautiful ribbon down and covering it with organdy. Let's see how this blouse is made. First of all, I have my uh, front, my center panel of the blouse. This is the pattern piece. I trace off the center panel of the blouse onto the fabric. Let me lift this up for you and show you. Onto the fabric. I'm going to put the organdy back there. I trace it onto the fabric. Simply trace it onto a big square. I did not cut it out. I just traced it. Once again, here is the flip-flopping over on the corner over on the corner, the center piece, flip-flopping coming down the front, flip-flopping coming down the front, flip-flopping coming down the front, and so forth. Next, and zigzag all of that down. Next comes the sandwich, the organdy sandwich part 
Okay, now what am I going to do to attach these two pieces? Well, I'm going to stitch, straight stitch all the way around the neck edge and I'm going to take the entredeau and lace string. This is an entredeau and lace string. I have already attached lace edging to a trimmed piece of entredeau and I call this an entredeau and lace string. Okay, I put this at the shoulder and I come down and zigzag this whole piece of entredeau and lace string through both layers of the front of this blouse. And then I leave my seam allowance and trim it away. And that is how I made the front of the ribbon and organdy sandwich blouse. One more last little piece down here. In order to make the cuff, I do the same thing, stitching the ribbon on underneath. And if I can stick my finger in here and show you, you see the organdy is on the top. I stitch them together and treat them as one piece. My little doll is also wearing a ribbon, a ribbon and organdy sandwich, and I'd like to show you that next. Robin's egg blue and teal blue are the two colors used to make my doll's ribbon and organdy sandwich. Looking at her little dress starting from the top, this is two layers of organdy with a little flip-flop uh, uh, narrow bow underneath. And this is the wing needle entredeau stitch, which is so pretty that it attaches the two rows. Moving on down her skirt, this is a very interesting technique. I'm going to show you how to do it in just a second. That has the ribbon and organdy sandwich in the hem. And then, of course, my hem is stitched to the dress using the wing needle entredeau. See your little robin's egg blue slip underneath it? When that peeks through, that makes quite a nice uh, effect. Starting with the little under part of the bodice, I have used ribbon. Now, I've drawn on the bow, and here is the line that will be the under part of the bodice, because remember, the bow goes underneath. I have flip-flopped this side and this side. I'm going to come in here, hold it, and flip-flop this, flip-flop this side right here. Just turn it over in order to flip-flop. That's going to make my bow. And then I go to, over to the other side and flip-flop it too. Then, here's the bodice of the dress. This comes down on top. Zigzag it around and do my wing needle entredeau stitch to attach this. The skirt is a really interesting technique also. Here is the skirt to the dress. After I fold up, decide how wide my hem is going to be, I trace on my lines. Now, I straight stitch my ribbon, that will be the ribbon and organdy sandwich, to the inside of the hem. You know why? When I turn it under, I want the ribbon to show through. Then these lines right here, I will come in and do a wing needle entredeau on those lines, of course using a stabilizer. And after I wing needle entredeau, then I will turn it to the back and simply using my scissors, trim away all of the excess organdy and my skirt is finished. Next, we have a silk ribbon stitch for you. It is called couched ribbon. I'm happy to have as my guest today, Kathy Brower. Kathy is senior editor of So Beautiful Magazine and absolutely is a wonderful silk ribbon embroidery teacher. Welcome to the show, Kathy. Thank you, Martha. Today I'm going to teach you how to couch ribbon and the concept behind couching ribbon is simply laying the ribbon down and tacking it down with either other ribbon, floss, uh, you can do it with beads, you can do it with knots, there's just several different ways to do it. It's also yet another great stitch for crazy patch, for covering seams or just shaping lace bows and, and laying those little fray tails down when you finish a bow. Let me show you some of the samples I have for you. The first sample I have for you is just a cute little trinket box that we've made. It came covered and then we put some embellishments on it. But this is another one of the uh, the photo transferred um, valentines that we put on organdy and we just put the silk ribbon right on where they were on the valentine. But this is where I want you to notice is the couch ribbon around the edge. This is the technique I'm going to stitch for you today showing you how to puff this ribbon and use the beads to add the interest to the couching. But before I show you how to do this, I want you to see other methods of couching. This beautiful little girl's beret uh, has been couched down with little tiny glass beads. And as you can see, I can stick my finger underneath there. Now you wouldn't want to do this on something you'd want to wash too often. If you want to wash it, I would dip it in water and let it dry. Um, 
The next project, this one is couched. You can't even see where this has been tacked down, but it's been tacked down with matching thread, just tiny little thread taken on the edge of the ribbon. This particular collar has been couched down with knots, little French knots or colonial knots, and that adds a really great textured effect to, to any couching you want to do on a collar or a dress. All right, on the sample that I've stitched, I've shown you several different techniques here. This particular one has matching thread, or you can use clear filament thread and just catch, you, it's very hard to see, but you just catch one little thread on each side here with your needle and thread, and, and that holds the ribbon down. This particular method, I've used a contrast color of knot in every half inch. This one, I've used a wide 13 millimeter uh, ribbon with the narrow um, four millimeter ribbon to hold it down and then I've puffed it as I've gone along. This one is the flat ribbon. It's been couched down with other flat smaller ribbon in a contrasting color. That adds a little interest too. Um, what I'm going to show you today, this method is what I used on the little charm box and what you need for that is you've got to have two needles going at the same time. <laughs> I'll have this needle underneath and with threaded up with just regular thread and of course this will be I've drawn a line here, a parallel line, to give me a guideline where my needle will go. And I will simply come up on this end with my ribbon and tack it to hold it straight on the other end. I'll take my thread and I will come up in one of the bars here and I will grab three little beads in my, I've got a great little bead tray, it's good just to put them in the top of the bead tray. Grab your three little beads, thread it up, and then bring it back down on the other side. And first you want to couch, you want to catch a couple of these. Well, I missed my ribbon. Well, I'll show you what you can do if that happens. You simply bring your ribbon underneath it, like this. And as you see, you'll pull that over. You'll come back and you'll take your little, your little point tool and you'll puff your ribbon up all through here. This one's a little difficult to do. You have to have a little patience and a little time with it. And you'll have to keep puffing going back. As you see, I'm having to go back to my previous stitches and puffing this up. It's the same way on the little box. I could pull any of those out. But you can tack them after you're done to keep them secure. And it, it's a really beautiful technique around any edge of a box. You just have to have a little patience, go back, puff them up, tack them down, and they're secure. Oh, Kathy, that is absolutely beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Next, I have a craft for you. This little craft takes about no time to make and really would be kind of nice as a gift for any lady that you would like to have a little special gift for. The craft today is a little plastic luggage tag. Let me turn it over and show you. And by the way, it'd be great since I travel so much, I think I'm going to have to have one of these for each one of my bags. You turn it over, this bag belongs to just like you would, you know, the airlines require that you have. Okay, what is special about this little luggage tag? Well, I have used my pieces. Here we go. Let's see how you make it. First of all, the little tag that says this bag belongs to, and by the way, this little kit you buy at any craft store, but this little bag belongs to, so I'm going to turn it over, and I can glue down any little short pieces of lace that I have. Let me flip this one over like that. Any little tiny short pieces of lace, just simply glue them down. Or if you have a little bit left over from a fancy band, you could simply cut off a little piece of your fancy band and use it. All right, after I fix my inside, I take a little tiny baby piece of edging. This is what I call doll edging, and glue it on the inside of the luggage tag. Take my piece that I've put the, um, let's see, I put the lace strips on, put it in there. Of course, I'll have to trim it up and make it nice and neat, and I'll have to for sure have these two pieces in there. Then I put my back on my little luggage tag, and that's all finished. This tag, this bag belongs to, and then I put my little attaching piece. That is really, really a cute little gift, and it certainly is a good way to use up those tiny, tiny little scraps that you really didn't think you had any use for. Next, I have a really pretty little pink pillow for you.
I have one more little ribbon and organdy sandwich treasure for you. This little pillow I've actually called treasure pillow. I've used pink organdy, as you can see, the pretty little pink ruffle on the edge. And the reason I called it the little treasure pillow is because these little side pieces here are made out of Swiss uh, insert, uh, edging, I can actually put a little treasure into. This pillow isn't hard to make. I started out with a pink rectangular piece. I've used Swiss edging cut to fit on all four sides. I put a piece of organdy over it and that makes it kind of peekaboo. Then I've cut two more pieces of Swiss, and Swiss edging. I fold it back, fold it back, and fold it over, and then I have to flip it to the back and kind of whip those together. I'll have to pull them over and whip them together. I have one that's already finished. I'm going to lay down on the front here to show you. This makes the little treasure house. Then I have another one that's almost finished, not quite. I haven't folded it under and done the final thing to it. Then I have a piece of ribbon that I zigzag down on one end, and of course another piece of ribbon for the other end, and then a little ribbon rosette goes there, and the little pillow is basically finished. Here is what it looks like when it's all finished, the little hidden treasures pillow that really is very easy to make. I'd like to invite you to go to my attic where I have a really beautiful christening dress in my grandmother's trunk that I'd like to show you. I have a beautiful christening dress to show you today. This dress is really interesting. Uh, it has a scoop neck, which means that it really was about 1880 or before. Let me show you something that this mother or grandmother did that I think is really interesting. The style of the dress originally, let me stuff the little sleeve up in there. The style of the dress originally was a short sleeve. Then, of course, fashions change for children as well as for ladies and men. So later on, someone added the longer sleeve. You know, maybe a, a grandchild or a great-grandchild, they added the longer sleeve, probably 20 to 40 years later, to make it a little more fashionable. This dress is absolutely beautiful with its princess line and the Swiss edging and the Swiss insertion. The tucks come all the way down with ruffles. Let me just pull this skirt up here so you can get a really good look at it. It has the tucks that go down, the insertion, the edging, the tucks, the insertion, the edging, and it goes all the way down to the bottom where there are three Beautiful ruffles there, one, two, three. This dress could certainly be recreated today and it would be really beautiful. I have a funny story to tell you. Some of these dresses in my collection are honestly big enough for 25 or 30 pound children to wear, or, you know, big babies. And I thought, gosh, why are these dresses so huge? They couldn't be christening dresses. After I did a little research, I found out that mothers kept their babies in these long dresses as long as they could, maybe even up until they were 12 months old. They used them for babysitters. Okay, think about a mother trying to cook supper over an open fire. She can't let the baby crawl into the fire, obviously, so they had no play pens. A mother probably had two or three young children. She couldn't hold the baby while she cooked, so here's what she did. She kept the babies in those long dresses, and it was time to cook her breakfast or her lunch or her dinner. She took the edge of that long dress over, lifted up the kitchen table, shoved the edge of the long dress underneath the kitchen table, lowered the kitchen table on the dress, and this is the truth, so help me, and then the baby could not crawl into the fire while she began to prepare her meal. I guess the baby tangled up around the table. Probably wasn't too happy, but that really was the reason they kept the babies in the long, or one of the reasons they kept the babies in the long dresses. I thought that was a cute story. I am so happy you joined me today in my sewing room. I hope you enjoyed the technique ribbon and organdy sandwiches, and I'd like to invite you to join us next time. Mm -hmm.